one does not simply walk into Mordor. The land of shadow. Welcome everyone. On this Friday the 13th, we are traveling once more to the Second Age to examine the orcs of that era. Uh, in this shadow cast, uh, we'll discuss the lore of the orcs of the Second Age uh, and track their migration uh, through Middle Earth. Um, and we'll also examine uh, you know, what the orcs of that era may have looked like and how they stack up to the orcs uh, of the Third Age. As we do in all of our shadow casts, we will be examining the orcs of the Second Age through the lens of the Tolkien canon, as well as the expanded uh, view of Middle-earth through the Tolkien legendarium. As we take a look at one of the most useful servants of shadow to the Dark Lords of Middle-earth. Now, in this video, we won't be examining the origin of the orc. That I wanna save for another uh, shadow cast. Uh, in this video, we're really gonna be looking at what happened to the orcs following the War of Wrath and the end of the First Age uh, and what they did uh, and where they migrated to in the Second Age and how Sauron used them in his armies. After the fall of Morgoth and his banishment into the void, the servants of Shadow that survived the War of Wrath and the destruction of Belerand fled into the east, hiding deep within the mountains of Middle-earth. For the first 1,000 years of the Second Age, the orcs remained leaderless and aimless. During this time of doubt and fear, they migrated east and south through the mountains, splitting into two distinct groups. Many settled into the north of Middle-earth, into the mountains of Angmar. Eventually moving south through the northern ranges of the Misty Mountains, raiding the settlements of men and elves both east and west of the mountains. These were called the Northern Orcs in the Second Age. Others fled along the northern ranges into the far east eventually settling into the mountains of East Rune. They also raided the men of those lands to plunder for treasure and slaves. These became known as the Eastern Orcs. The threat the Orcs posed was minimal until Sauron began to rise once more. When the Dark Lord chose Mordor as his base of operations, and began to fortify its borders, he depended once more upon the power of the orcs to fuel his engine of war. They multiplied quickly and were easily swayed to his will. All evil creatures were drawn to the shadow. The northern orcs of Angmar and the Misty Mountains flooded into Mordor. However, the eastern orcs farther removed from his power, looked on Sauron with contempt, and for the most part refused his call. They remembered that Sauron had abandoned Angband to its fate, and they didn't trust Sauron in the guise of Anatar. It may well have been for this very reason that Sauron, after the making of the Rings of Power and attacking Eriador, did not have the forces needed to vanquish the foes of Linden and Numenor, as well as fighting the dwarves of khazad after they attacked his forces from the rear. Sauron, enraged by this surprise attack from the dwarves, 
commanded the orcs to attack them wherever they could be found. When Sauron's forces were overwhelmed, he fled back to Mordor, deciding to assault Numenor through deceit and treachery rather than through arms. Many of the orcs fled back to Mordor, but others fled to the mountains of Angmar and soon after began waging war upon Mount Gundabad. The orcs sacked the mountain and made of it a fortress of fear well into the Third Age of Middle-earth. After the fall of Numenor, Sauron lost his physical form in the Great Flood as it sank into the sea. However, his spirit endured, and in time he was able to take shape again, though never fair of form as before. The orcs of the east now began to trust him. When Sauron saw that Numenor in exile had grown strong again in Middle-earth, he once more gathered a vast force of orcs in Mordor. Sauron was now able to bring together both the orcs of the east and the orcs of the north to form a vast army never before seen in Middle-earth. Sauron's surprise assault and victory over Gondor shocked the kingdoms of the north and united a northern army of elves, men, and dwarves. This last alliance of men and elves attacked Mordor and eventually defeated Sauron on the slopes of Mount Doom. In the aftermath, nearly all of the orcs of Mordor were slain. Some fled back into the Far East, while others fled north into the Misty Mountains. So ended the time of the orcs in the Second Age. What did these orcs look like? Were they stronger or weaker than those of the Third Age? Such are the debates of those who love Middle-earth. We can't know for sure, but some would say that yes, they were greater because they were more closely linked to the essence of Morgoth, who first conceived them. They would have been larger, stronger, and lived longer, while the orcs that came in later ages were weaker for being mingled with lesser creatures. Others believe that Sauron, having spent millennium breeding the great black Uruks of Mordor, and later Saruman, who crossbred half-orcs and goblin men to create the mighty Urukai of Isengard, would have made orcs that were stronger, larger than any of the orcs ever seen in the Second Age. This debate can only be conjecture, because none now live who remember it. What we can say for sure is that the orcs of the Second Age developed into two distinct races of orc. The orcs of the north were smaller and more agile, living in caves and tunnels beneath the misty mountains. Though the orcs of Angmar and Gundabad were said to be larger and more fierce than most of the northern stock. The orcs of the east, on the other hand, were counted as great brutes and savage warriors that would eventually be used by Sauron to breed the large soldier orcs of Mordor, the great black Uruks used in the War of the Ring during the Third Age. Despite all the debates, we here in Mordor believe that the orcs of the Second Age were likely just as brutal and savage as the orcs of the Third Age. In the end, all orcs were the spawn of Morgoth, and so ever after were apt to evil in Middle-earth. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed today's Shadowcast as we delve deep into the orcs of the Second Age. Um, in my next Shadowcast, which may come a little bit sooner than next Friday, actually, I think maybe a lot sooner, uh, I am going to explore a rumor that has just surfaced recently uh, about the evil characters in the new Amazon series, um, The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power. Uh, 
we haven't had a lot of news from the show uh, recently, and this was just a tidbit of rumor that kind of filtered down through uh, the Tolkien and uh, Lord of the Rings community. So um, uh, I'll be discussing that, and uh, and then from there I'll talk about what my next shadow cat, my next full shadow cast will be. So anyway, I'll see you guys next time as we uh, explore the dark plain of Gorgoroth in the land of shadow.